So as you may be aware, there is an Ebola outbreak that's happening. And if you've heard anything about the virus, then you know that this is a potentially scary situation. And I'm going to explain all the reasons why that is here in the next few minutes. Now, this video isn't meant to be fear-mongering. It's not to make you panic. Don't freak out. Uh, don't go buy your hazmat suit until after uh, the video's over. Just give me a few minutes, okay? And I'm going to hopefully tell you some things that maybe you haven't heard in the mainstream media. Uh, so first off about the disease, this is a very deadly disease. The death rate has hit 70%. The World Health Organization is warning that the outbreak is drastically outpacing the response. The World Health Organization also estimates that within two months, we could see up to 10,000 new cases a week. Every week. 10,000 new cases is what they're currently predicting. Now, as of right now, the vast majority of the outbreak has been contained to the continent of Africa. And even on Africa, it's not like this disease is everywhere. It's primarily located in places like Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. Uh, but many people are concerned about the possibility of it reaching their neighborhood. And I mean, we live in a period and an age where the whole globe is interconnected. Every single day, people from Africa and everywhere else come and arrive in places like the U.S. Now, many are aware that some of those people have Ebola or have been in contact with people who have Ebola. And you also may be aware that at least one person has made it over so far that did have it. His name was Eric Duncan. He landed in uh, Texas and he died in Texas. So the first Ebola case in America, he didn't survive. Um, now, he handled a sick Ebola woman in Africa before traveling to the U.S. He did lie on the government honor system survey uh, because he was asked if he had any contact with anybody over there, and he said no. Uh, but once he got over here, he did get sick. He went to the hospital. He's dead now, but now two other nurses that we know of have it. So Ebola is a very dangerous disease, and it's scary because it can lie within a host for almost a month without showing any signs or symptoms. So the normal incubation period for the virus is 21 days. So you could have this virus inside your body. You could be going right along for 21 days, and then all of a sudden start showing symptoms. Now... It's not just 21 days because there's been a recent study that's come out that's shown that there's a 12% chance that the incubation period could actually last longer than 21 days. Now, all these facts that I'm giving you, these, these things like this, don't just take my word for it. I'm going to always leave links down in the description box as I always do in my videos so you can go read this information for yourself. I'm not quoting some no-name blog out here. All my information comes from news organizations and from the so-called quote experts. So the way the virus works is that it attaches itself to a cell in your body and of course cells replicate and then after it's gotten in there the cell explodes sending infectious particles flying all over the place um, it overtakes the immune system eventually and attacks almost every organ and tissue within your body uh, it eventually causes blood clots and bleeding internally and externally. I mean, it, once it builds up so much inside, it starts coming out of your outsides. Uh, so every orifice of your body, you could have blood coming out of your ears, nose, eyes, your butthole. Uh, it basically melts your insides. And so it is a horrible, horrible way to die. Now, you have two main extremist groups right now debating the virus in the U.S., I, and I'm focused on the U.S. because that's where I'm from, that's what I'm familiar with, and that's where most of my audience is, and that's also where we have a case of Ebola. Um, so, it's also where a lot of screw-ups have occurred. Now, on one side, you have people who believe that an outbreak is imminent, and that the decisions being made by our government is putting everyone at risk, and in a few months... We're all going to be going grocery shopping in Walmart wearing hazmat suits. Now, on the other side, you've got people who say if you talk about it or if you're concerned about it, then you're just buying into the fear-mongering. And as long as the experts say it's under control and fine, 
then it is going to be fine. And we live in a first world country. We're America. And since we don't bathe in each other's feces down by the river, and as long as we have our hand sanitizers, then we'll be just fine. So these are the two main groups that you're hearing about. You've got one group screaming apocalypse now. You've got one group screaming, you know, if you're concerned about this at all, then you're just a conspiracy theorist and you're fearful for nothing. Me personally, I'm somewhere in the middle. You know, I'm not expecting the apocalypse. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's a little moronic to not look at the current situation that even by the own doctor's admissions is currently spiraling out of control. And I think it's a little silly to not be alarmed at some of the things that are being said by the so-called experts. So right now, if you turn on the mainstream media, you'll hear repeatedly that Ebola is hard to catch. Hard to catch, hard to catch, hard to catch. In fact, it's so hard to catch that doctors and nurses keep on catching it, even though they're using the protocols, supposedly, and wearing these huge outfits. Uh, but nevertheless, a lot of people are comparing it to AIDS. Uh, but I can assure you that this is a hell of a lot easier to catch than AIDS. You don't see patients with AIDS being treated like these patients with Ebola. Now, the virus itself, one of the reasons why it's so scary is because it can live outside of the host for a long time. At least several hours that we know of. And here is a interview from ABC. This is George Stephanopoulos talking with a doctor, asking them about Ebola outside of the host. Let's say someone with Ebola was right here, touched this surface, I came along and touched it. How long would those particles live on the surface and could I get it by putting my hand in the same place? Yeah, this is one of these areas where we don't really know enough. We do know that this virus can survive on surfaces for a few hours. How long it will survive depends on the surface, depends on the environment. So how long can it live outside the host? We don't know. So what about uh, if you get sneezed on? You know, if it if droplets can stay on a table for hours and still be uh, contagious and spread, what about something like sneezing? You know, if somebody sneezes on you, who has it? You know, common sense would tell me that if you touch a table and can catch it, that you would also be able to catch it by sneezing. But according to the doctor, well, let me just play it for you. If you somehow ended up sitting next to a person on the plane who had Ebola and they sneezed, could you get it you know, from a few feet away? The, could the droplets travel through the air like that? Sneezing is not a, a symptom of Ebola. You see that with colds, you see that with flu, but you don't see that, that with Ebola. Did you catch that? The doctor was asked if you could catch Ebola from sneezing. And the doctor responded with, sneezing isn't a symptom of Ebola. Really, doctor? So you're telling me if I catch Ebola, I may have blood shooting out of my butt, but I'm not going to be sneezing because you won't sneeze with Ebola. You know, that's not a symptom of it. I mean, it's so retarded, and it would be funny if it wasn't so serious. But he totally dodges the question, but I'm going to take a wild, logical guess and say that if you can come around and touch a desk and then somebody come back hours later uh, and touch it and they can catch it from that way, I would go out on a limb and say the odds are probably pretty good that if somebody sneezes in your face, you might could catch Ebola. But, you know, according to the doctor, it's not a symptom, so don't worry about it. So right now, the only way the virus is spread is through fluids that we know of, which could be uh, sweat droplets, vomit, spit, diarrhea, whatever. Uh, the fear is, though, that the virus could potentially go airborne. And the thing you have to understand about uh, especially this particular virus is that it's, it's not a one-size-fits-all. It's not like you can always bet on this virus doing the same thing because the virus is constantly evolving. It's constantly mutating and changing. And so every new person that it infects, it has the possibility of turning and doing something else unexpectedly. Um, so if we are seeing thousands of new cases per day, potentially, is it really that crazy to think that the virus couldn't become airborne? And I'm not going to just let you sit there and just listen to me ask that question. Here is 
Army General Dempsey, he's the current chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. He was asked about Ebola in an interview with CNN. Are you, General Dempsey, worried about Ebola here in the U.S.? I've been worried about Ebola globally for about 90 days. Uh, and I have had some on my staff that were probably a little more worried than I was even a few weeks or months before that. Why? I'm worried about it because it uh, because we know so little about it. You know, you'll hear different people describe whether it could become airborne. I mean, if you bring two, you know, two uh, uh, doctors who happen to have that specialty into a room, one will say, "No, there's no way it'll ever become airborne, but it could mutate, so it would be harder to discover." It actually disguises itself in the body, which is what makes it so dangerous and has that incubation period of about 21 days. Another doctor will say, well, if it continues to mutate at the rate it's mutating, and if we go from 20,000 infected to 100,000, the population might allow it the opportunity to mutate and become airborne. And then it will be an extraordinarily serious problem. I don't know who's right. I don't want to take that chance, so I'm taking it very seriously. So why is Dempsey and some doctors worried that it could go airborne? Because 25 years ago, studies showed that the Ebola virus was transmitted between monkeys in different cages who were separated, meaning the only way they were able to catch it was through the air, which means at one point the virus did go airborne and it could do so again. So what can we do to protect ourselves? You know, some have called for flights to stop coming in from those afflicted nations. Uh, but would stopping people who come in contact with a disease-ridden nation, you know, in the last 30 days, do you think that would really prevent an outbreak from occurring? According to the CDC and the government, they say no. They say that wouldn't help. In fact, the government and the CDC has been arguing on air that stopping and banning flights to and from Africa would actually cause more harm and lead to a greater outbreak. They say currently the way it works with the airlines open, they can easily get all the contact information they need from the people who may have been in contact with the virus. They say they can coordinate uh, with state officials and have them keep tabs on these people. They can get their friends and find out who their contacts are. Um, they can also they also say that people are more likely to tell the truth with it being wide open and that they can openly tell um, the, the government workers, yes, I've been in contact with this. You may should look after me for a little bit, uh, which definitely worked out great for Eric Duncan in Texas, right? So by banning flights, they argue that it would be harder to get this information. They also claim it would make it harder to fight the disease in Africa. So to that, I would say, if we had a ban, we wouldn't need their information. We wouldn't need their friends or their contacts. We wouldn't need to contact each state and have their health officials go checking up on hundreds of people if they aren't here in the first place. You see, but that's that's way too logical, maybe. I don't know. Bo, but dragon, they could just fly to a different country and then land in the U.S., so you're not going to stop it. Ever heard of a passport? Do they, do they not stamp those things anymore, depending on where you've been? As far as combating the disease in Africa, no one is saying stop doctors from going over there. We just don't want those people coming over here. And if they are, looks like it would make sense to quarantine these people who knowingly went into the hot zone. You could ban commercial flights, by the way, and still allow charter flights to come in and out. And nobody would be preventing doctors from wanting to fly over there. If you want to go, more power to you. And thankfully, there are good people in the world who are willing to take that risk and go over there. And my thoughts are with them each and every day. They're, they do a hell of a job, something I could not do. I don't have those balls. <laughs> that does not belong to me. I would not be caught dead over there. Or if I was over there, I would probably be caught dead. Anyway, so how serious is the government taking this? Well, pretty damn serious because at least as far as the Duncan family is concerned, you know, Eric Duncan, the guy who caught Ebola, brought it over to the U.S., gave it to a couple of nurses and who knows who else. His family is under mandatory quarantine. 
and they actually tried to break the quarantine earlier, and so the government actually put in armed guards. So there's armed guards outside the house making sure these people don't leave, and that's how serious they think this threat is. Now, that's just one family. How many more Eric Duncans could get through the honor system barricade? And how many more armed guards do we need outside families' homes for people who potentially could have come in contact with these people? But a lot of people don't want to close the borders. They say, oh, but dragon, they're checking people at the airports now for their temperature. So if they got all the checks in place, the protocols they're following, if they ain't got a temperature, they ain't got that Ebola. You know? I mean, that's, that's right. Okay. Great idea. Check people for a temperature, and if they don't have a temperature, then everything's good, right? Because, of course, we know Western medicine hasn't uh, come as far as scientifically as we would have hoped they would by now. You know, it's not like Western medicine has developed any over-the-counter medicine like those mythical pills you've heard about in folklore like Tylenol that can, you know, reduce a low-grade fever. I mean, we, we don't have any of that, right? Oh, but dragon, do you think you could possibly contain it if we ban travel, though? Are you going to really contain this disease? All I know is that close to 30 countries have already done it. It's not like this idea that just recently popped up. A lot of third world country dictators have a lot more common sense, it appears, than uh, some of the folks living in the first world country. Uh, So 30 countries almost have already done it, if it's not already 30. There's more people doing it as I speak. And many of these people or these countries that are actually blocking travel are in Africa. And that's how a lot of these countries in Africa have actually stopped the spread and been able to contain the disease. Because you see, if you have hundreds of people coming in every single day who could have possibly been um, infected or around the disease, then you're just sitting there just increasing your odds of this getting out of control and it getting out into the public. So can the virus be contained? Yeah, we've got proof of it. Places in Africa are doing it. Do we have an outbreak of Ebola in the U.S.? No. No, not that we know of. But with a virus that can incubate in the body for almost a month before showing symptoms, the truth is we won't know if we have an outbreak until we have an outbreak. And we won't know that for a few more weeks. If you want to read more about it, links down in the description box. Post below. Let me know, do you think the U.S. should place a ban on traveling from Ebola-stricken countries? That does it for me, the Red Dragon. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.